Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny, Queen Sugar, season four, episode nine. Stare at the same flames. Ooh, what does that mean? <laughs> you know how we do on this channel. I give a summary of everything, give my review, and then my predictions for the next episode. Have I been right so far? Have I been wrong? We'll see. That's all coming up next. We start off this episode and unfortunately Charlie is at the bar getting wasted. She's had enough. The meal has burned down. She's having problems with her sister, having problems with her ex-husband, having problems with her son, having problems with her political run. Just so much going on and she is taking all of her troubles to the bar. So much so the bartender says, hey, slow it down, maybe you shouldn't drink so much. And she spills the beans that, hey, I'm even running for office and I'm just letting it all hang out with drinking. And he says, you know what, if you're running for office, you might wanna also consider that people are gonna start to slowly get in here the later it gets in the day and also leading into the morning. You might wanna leave because if you're running for office, people are gonna be taking pictures, people are gonna take videos. So watch out. So I thought that was a great heads up that the bartender did with Charlie. She puts on those sunglasses as if they were supposed to make her incognito <laughs> and says, pour me another one. Vibe. She's at home. She took, cooks a very good meal. We see that Hollywood is surprised that she's cooked such a big meal. And he says, look, I appreciate you cooking. But what's going on? What's happening? Kind of like that inclination. You cook, but maybe not like this every day. So Vi says, you know, I really want to talk to you because, and when she says that, I thought, oh, is it about to hit the fan? Because on the last reviews, I have always said that I thought that Vi was pushing him away. But moving on, she tells Hollywood that through observing and all of the issues with her ex, that not only does she have this trauma from being verbally abused, mentally abused, and physically abused, that she's in her own way and trying to figure herself out and make herself better. She also told him that she noticed that when he stood up for her and was basically fighting for her dignity and, and that, that was his wife and he stood up for her, that, and that's how he saw it through his eyes. But Vi says, you know, when my ex-husband, he was never violent towards me, but in the beginning, the first time I saw him get aggressive and violent, it was towards another person. And it was towards them defending me or defending my honor. And of course, Hollywood says, look, I was just defending my wife. I thought I was doing the right thing, but she's expressing to him, because of my trauma, this reminded me of my ex-husband. This reminded me of all of the times he would get aggressive and it just got worse. I, un I understood her perspective and that she's expressing to him that it reminded her of all of those triggers that are bothering her. But at the same time, I was getting so frustrated with Vi because she was pushing him away, sort of. I understand that she has to share what's triggering her. But at the same time, it was like she was putting blame on him when he actually thought he was doing the right thing. Darla drives up to Blue Angel's home and as I predicted in other videos, she sees him and she finally expresses that, you know, it really bothered me that I saw you with your girlfriend, whoever you're dating, and it really hurt me and I felt that, wow, not only do you have this new interest, that her daughter is our son's best friend or they hang together all the time and they play together. Don't you think I should have known that since I am Blue's mother and you know, Blue, well, darling, I thought you said that you didn't want us ringing our people we dating around each other and it was too much so I didn't tell you, you know? And of course she said, you know, well, it bothered her and it hurt her and he has this conflicted look like, 
damn if I do, damn if I don't, because you say one thing and then you do another. We start to see this downhill once again, right again. Kudos to myself. I have to give a pat on the back that I had a feeling that Darla would do this. Not because of a jealousy, but the fact that her having that feeling constantly that she's not needed, that she's not wanted. And once she gets a little taste of not being needed or not being loved or wanted, that was a trigger again in the first place of how she got on drugs because she felt that way about her family. She felt that way about her friends, that she was constantly judged constantly this image of her having to be so perfect and once she did not live up to that standard she started this down slope which led her into the life of substance abuse so we're seeing the phases her of her continuing to have this problem because you have to remember she we saw the emotional downward when she was at work and she saw the co-workers reading the book about her and they put the book on her desk face down so when she would pick it up it was exactly on the chapter that was speaking of her and people can put two and two together it's a small town trauma number one that she still hasn't dealt with or she still hasn't called her sponsor to talk about so i thought here we go this is something that's pushing to her into her more and getting her coerced to mess with her sobriety. So Nova is reuniting with the long lost, for, long lost cousin, which I have said in the beginning is very suspicious. Why wouldn't your mother or anybody else in your family mention this long lost cousin? So I'm still kind of sketchy about that. But she met up with the long lost cousin and we had the first impression that she's just this wonderful cousin that really cared. And she expressed how your mother brought you over here and you played in my yard and you were so happy. And Nova's just so overwhelmed that she had a piece and experience actually being in her presence once before. So we go into her home and we're looking at her home and it really kind of looks like Nova's place. It's very holistic and holistic and herbs and flowers and windows and she, she's dressed sort of the same as Nova. So we see there's this connection and maybe behavior or who she is coming full circle. And Nova realizes that and you can tell she immediately attaches to her very, very quickly because she sees herself in this cousin uh, still not uh, still not diving into that I still got some shaky feelings about that she pulls photographs out and photo books out to show the Nova and say oh this is your Nana or this is your great grandma or this is this or this is that so Nova asks the question basically layman term like where you been like you know what's really going on so she goes into to this story that I really don't 100% believe. She says that as a young woman, that since she didn't pursue, I guess, the lifestyle or the education that her father preferred, and she wanted to go the more holistic route, she wanted to be a healer, that he banished her from the family. Mm, okay, you have kids or you have family members, and I get they may say, hey, I don't want to support your dream or maybe i'm not gonna fund your dream but banishing from the family oh not really falling for that one then we learn that nova's mother was not cremated but she was buried and not only that but buried on family ground why the lies why has the family been lying and not only that her father why did the father lie to the family and Nova making them believe that she was cremated and her ashes were thrown into a lake or a river. Some lies somewhere, I'm not 100%. If it is the truth, great, but so sketchy. Those pieces don't go together and it really doesn't make much sense to me. So we'll see. The scene cuts into the next morning. And we see Micah, he's in his room being a young guy, kind of just kicking it and chilling in the room. And 
what dawned on me is that, wow, you haven't inquired about your mother. Your mother's not home and you're not thinking about that? Okay. He hears the doorbell. It's his girlfriend, Kiki, and she's telling him that she wants to be involved and take their relationship to the next level, if you know what I mean. And he's telling her, what about school? What about this? What about that? And she's saying that it's making him even more interesting and, and confirms her decision as well that she wants to go forward with taking their relationship to the next level and she wants to have this experience with him and that she trusts him now it's not Michael's first time but it's her first time so he's still hesitant in just going forward like you know maybe a young guy would do and say okay and get right to it he's really hesitant and he's really thinking you know clearly about the whole situation and taking it under consideration he knows that he's getting ready for school he's gonna take tests he really wants to be focused so that's a plus. They go into his room, they're making out, and he gets a call from his mom, and he's just like, hello? And here's Charlie on the phone. Hello, Micah. You're a good kid. And he's just like, mom, come on, Micah. All that education, bruh, and you can't find out something's wrong with your mother, something's wrong. Hello, ding, ding. All the book sense in the world, but no common sense. And he says, well, okay. And she tells him to meet him somewhere later on in the day, and he just says, okay, really, dude? Anyway, I, I move on. Hollywood and Ralph Angel have a meetup and a very raspy conversation as usual. Hey, Ralph Angel, how you doing? How you doing, Hollywood? What's going on? Will's talking to you on fire. I just really want to say, Ricola, can we, can we clear, we clear this? What? We have two Batmans going on. I don't understand this. But anywho, so they get together and they meet and they're talking about what I noticed the same problems. Every time they meet up, it's not a good progress report. It's always something that is bringing them together as sadness as men. And I thought, wow, the women in all of their lives, except for his Ralph Angel's new boo, but he still has problems, is they're, they're always in this dark cloud, Hollywood and Ralph Angel. Even though they have some up, up, town, up beats in life, they're, they're more surrounded by downbeats, which is like, ooh, what is really going on? But Hollywood expresses that he's just in the mist and he's trying to figure stuff out with Vi and things in his life, staring at the same flames, get the title of the writing and how they're developing this, that everybody is going through the storm. Everybody is looking at the same flames. This fire might be a little higher, this fire might be hotter, this fire might be blue, this fire might be red. But as a family collectively, they're all staring at the same flames. They're all in this downward bound together. Cut back to Vi, Vi's, Prize, Pies, and Dinah, that long name for a restaurant. Should have just been Vi's. Anywho, we're at Vi's restaurant <laughs> and she's taking logs and she's jotting it down and business is going as normal. And the young gentleman who's working for her, who actually vandalized her diner in the previous episodes, he comes sincerely with a pie or cake, I think, and he gives it to Vi and says, this is from my mother for giving me a second chance. We just want to show you know, that, you know, I, I'm sorry, thank you, and this is my mom made this, here you go, Vi. And Vi is showing the first signs of bitterness and anger, and it's being taken out on the wrong people. And what she does is she doesn't yell, she's just really blunt and really forceful with him and says, I made a schedule, I put all the things you were supposed to do on the wall, and basically get to it. And even the co-worker, right, looks at Vi like, gives her that look like, girl, you know you're wrong. You could at least say thank you. You know, it's a very cold personality that is coming from Vi. Vi is going through that transition of helping others, doing what she can, smiling, putting on a face. But deep down inside, wherever she can release some anger or snooty comments to hurt other people she gets relief out of that so if you're a hurt person 
and you're putting that on other people, you're you're doing that cycle to say, hmm, who can I snap back at? Who won't snap back? Because if you notice in a few episodes earlier, even at the end of the previous season, she was like that with Darla, even though she had every right to be upset with her. She has too much information and everybody else has moved on and she's put pushing those comments and being mean at Darla. And this guy who she doesn't know who's a young kid, go to the wall and see what I did. Basically just brushing people off. So red flags. This next scene is so pivotal psychologically. We have Hollywood that's kicking it with some of his friends playing cards, shooting the breeze, maybe having a beer, talking about sports, and just catching up, you know, with his boys just to see what's going on. And in the midst of those conversations while they're talking about sports, one of his friends says, well, Hollywood, you know, I heard around town that, you know, Vi's ex-husband came around and you gave him the business. And his other friends just high-fiving and he's like, yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, <laughs> okay. And he said, well, you know, man, you know, it's all right. You did the right thing, man. I, I, I would have beat up or pushed around anybody that came, you know, to my wife like that and was threatening my wife. And he said, well, you know, uh, you know, I could have could have handled it a little differently, you know, and I'm thinking, ooh, are you doubting your quote-unquote manhood and what you thought was right? Is Vi crippling or knocking down what he feels he should do as a husband? Because now it makes him conflicted to where did I do the right thing or not? Should I not protected you by it was that very meek confused response of well, no I could handle a little differently well maybe I should have this and maybe I should have that his personality is changing what the heck Micah goes to Vi's restaurant you know asking Vi and Prosper and he's a little new boo his new boo <laughs> asking them hey have you seen my mother um, you know, she said we were supposed to meet at this place, but she's not there. Bravo, Micah. I thought your common sense wasn't going to come in. It finally did. Yay. Victory to toodaloo. I'm like, okay, come on, bro. You ain't seen your mom. You're not going to look for her, but gladly he does. Whew. So <laughs> then we cut to Darla. Here we go. Another flame. We see Darla. She goes to the gentleman that she was dating. You could tell she shows up unexpectedly, right? She goes to the location where the guy that she used to date, you could tell he's having rehearsal, they're fiddling around on the instruments and they look like they practicing for a gig or whatever the case may be. And she has a box or a little bag of treats or something. And he gives her that look like, hey, but what are you doing here? And I'm thinking, Darla. Once again, confirming what I thought, she's seeking someone to give her attention and the feeling of being wanted. Because she hadn't talked to this guy in a while. We haven't seen him in a minute, and we know they haven't been talking. But he says, well, hi, Darla. And he says, you know, to his friends, hey, everybody, this is Darla. And he says, you know, let's take five. And I thought, whoo, here we go. They leave. And she's like, hey brought some treats and uh you know thinking later on we could you know chill out and instead of having a i'm happy to see you reaction he says well um how have you been and i read the book and darla's just like you read the book okay and he says i read the book and after reading the book i just don't think that we should see each other like we used to. So she says, out of all people, meaning you own drugs too, out of all people, I would have thought you would understand that's my past. And there's nothing I can do about my past. So why are you doing this? He explains, look, I read the book and saw what you did, which means that that's a conflict and a threat to my sobriety. I said in the review for the last two episodes, Two substance abuse people in a relationship is dangerous to stand sober. If you've seen The Wire, if you've seen The Corner, if you've seen any type of TV show or psych psychological 
uh, uh, references to drug abuse or anything like that. It is so dangerous. That's why in a lot of nar narcotic Narcotics Anonymous and all of these organizations that help with people remaining s sober and learning about how to stay sober, they don't allow or recommend you to boyfriend and girlfriend or talk with people who are trying to get their lives together because you both remember a time when you were high. And that's not good when you got two people dealing with that at the same time. Not saying it can't be done, but statistically and behavior wise, not a good idea. So after he tells her that she is distraught, she is done. You can tell by her giving him an evil look like, thought she was gonna slap him in the face. And she's angry and he says, look, think about what just happened. There's been a book out about you that's told all your business your entire life. Your drug abuse, this abuse, the stuff with your son, how your life fell apart. And you're not affected by this? You haven't called and talked to your sponsor? He said, if that were me, I would be depressed. And I'm thinking, clap, clap, clap. That's a good point. Letting her know that, darling, you are in denial that you need help. It's one thing that she's thinking, I got this, I can fight this on my own. And he's telling her, look, you haven't been sober and clear-minded that long. Don't think just because you have a job or somewhere to live or that you're developing your relationship with your son again and the father of your child that everything is okie-dokie. You forever will be an addict for the rest of your life. And that's the tone and that's what he was saying to her and basically saying, you need to call your sponsor. She brushes it off and she says, well, well okay. She leaves the bag and she is gone and I thought strike number two strike number two Darla call your sponsor girl but I called that I called it so Charlie she's at the bar and it's another day because it's daylight and it's people in there just like the bartender said more people are coming in and who comes strolling in to help is Nova and Charlie has that look like out of all people bitch why are you <laughs> like she has that look like Ugh. <laughs> so Nova comes in she's like I know you're mad at me but I need to get you out of here and I'm thinking girl get your sister get this get she's still mad at you she 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 pissed drunk but she's <laughs> she's sober enough to know she's still mad at you so she gets her picks her up and takes her home Hollywood goes back into the restaurant of Vice come on y'all say it Vice Prize, pies, and <laughs> Dinah. <laughs> and he goes in there and he talks to her. And another cold energy and attitude from Vi. You haven't seen your man all day. He walks in. He says, hi, Vi. And you at the bar or you at the little counter wiping down the counter. Hi. Really, Vi? Really? I hope my prediction is not right. I hope that Vi doesn't push him away. Next sign of her being cold-hearted because you're angry and because you've, you're have you sad and because you're suffering from your trauma. Not a good sign. But he goes to her. She hasn't hugged him, didn't embrace him, didn't give him a kiss or anything. She just watches him walk to the other side of the counter. Hi. And he said, you know what? I talked to the fellas. And after talking to the fellas, we ain't had nothing to talk about. But just sports and whatever. Only person I get to talk to about deep stuff is you. And I'm thinking, okay. And he says, you know, there are support groups. He hands her a handout, you know, like a little flyer. And he says, there's women groups. They talk about all kinds of stuff. But there's not anything for men. True. Great idea. He expresses that maybe he should start something to help men deal with their emotions and not hop to aggressiveness and learning about themselves, which is amazing. And Vi's reaction. Sounds like a good idea. Woo! Vi! We cut to the scene where Nova has Charlie and she's undressing her and putting her in night clothes and getting her in the bed to lay down. And she's patting her on the back and she holds her and she says, you know, basically that I love you and you're my sister. And just as Nova is about to walk into the room, Charlie says in her drunk haze, she has enough clarity to push out 
Why did you write those things about me? Uh -huh. And she says it in so much pain. And you can tell it's a kind of hurt that no matter what else is going on in my life, and I may be drunk, but I do remember clearly that you hurt me. And Nova turns around and she says, I didn't mean to hurt you. I, I, I thought that I was doing something good. Okay. <laughs> I thought that I was doing something good and I didn't mean to hurt you. And uh, she finally, glory, finally admits, okay, instead of defending her actions, she finally admits that was selfish of me and I was wrong. Damn, it's about time, son, that you admitted that it was wrong. <laughs> Nova has defended her actions and saying this is for healing and this is for them and basically just saying this my book and this is what I thought who cares if your life is messed up the end this is the book this is what it is your secret's out so so she's finally admitting she was wrong and selfish it's about time now that she's been al alone and on that, uh, that ledge by herself and realizing dang I don't have my family that humbled her very quickly <laughs> they handled her very quickly. Okay, so the next morning, Charlie gets up. She's still a little hazy. She gets up. She sees on the counter that there is fruit, breakfast, and some coffee and some juice. And there is an article kind of tucked into the plate or the tray. And she picks it up. And it's front page of a local newspaper. And Nova is the artist of a column on the front page and she basically says that she was wrong and she loves her sister and her sister is a strong person and that she's running for office and you should vote for her because she gets stuff she gets stuff done and she's important and you should vote for her i should retract everything i said about her i'm gonna do what i can to make it right with this book and you should vote for her she's a wonderful person and i'm sitting there like whoopee boopy do okay because what will make it right is sharing that coin that you're getting from that book and giving it to everybody that's in the book and then putting a another book out retracting your statements and apologizing to your family that now that is how you make it right because i would have read that in the newspaper like first of all this just in this state and in this town ain't nobody everybody ain't reading this but your book is new york's bestseller so apologize to the world boo boo because that i would have read that like uh -huh. Is that it? And then that really doesn't help, in my opinion. Because you say one thing in your book, now you're saying something different in the article. That is going to backfire. People are going to say, well, is this the you? Or is this the real you? Or is, is this the truth? Or is your sister a liar? Just statements and confusion tennis going back and forth. We don't know who to believe. After Charlie sees all of that, Michael comes in and says, Mom, you know, while she's in the office, she's trying to read some stuff and get her the stuff back together, get her day going. And he says, Mom, you know, come with me. I got something to show you. Can you come with me? And she's just like, yeah, what is it? He's like, you know, do you trust me? And she's looking at him like, not really, but I'll get up and go. So she gets up and goes, and he guides her, and they show up, and you can see that they're in an area of the queen sugar mill that is destroyed, but they've kind of decorated it and they put up a sign. And she has about a handful of people in there from the town who are either friends, farmers, or anybody that they know. And they got, you know, they have lights up and they're singing a song and they're encouraging her. Vi is there, Hollywood's there, Ralph Angel's there, and Micah's in there. And they're saying, look, we're telling you that everything's going to be okay and we are going to look at this area that's feasible that's something of what burned down and we're going to start fresh and we're going to keep going and we're going to do as a people what we've always had to learn to do which is move on pick up and go forward and and i thought to myself 
that was very beautiful and Charlie has tears and she's very joyful and they're singing a song and they're helping to encourage her. They're helping her to say, this was a downfall. This is something that was really rough. We're literally standing in ashes and we're literally standing in gravel and something that is destroyed, but we want to encourage you. And I thought that was a beautiful scene. At the same time, we're having an uplift of emotion we are cutting back and forth of a scene with Darla going deeper and deeper and closer and closer to a relapse. She is sitting at the table looking at a bag, which we don't know at first. We don't know if it's drugs or alcohol, but the closer the camera gets to the bag, we see it is a bottle of alcohol and she's looking at it. And she does a cry that such amazing acting, such amazing act, acting from the individual who plays Charlie when she confronts Nova about why did you write that in a book? Because she gets a gut cry. I mean, a cry when you are just at the last dwindle of nothing and arches her back and just cries and, let it, and lets it out. It's the same cry that Darla does in trying to fight that on her own and it's so frustrating to see it as a viewer because you think Darla call somebody go somewhere don't do this because the first gate the first opening door to relapsing weed and alcohol okay and she has one of them alcohol and she is fighting it fighting it and she's just so conflicted and it's going back and forth from scene to scene. The, the, the supporters for Charlie saying, you can do it, you can do it. And Darla on the other end, about to give it all up. And you say, man, come on, Darla. Because it's also giving us the reality that just because you're sober doesn't mean that you stay sober. That's also something that will probably, probably be addressed in this series, is that things can be great, but you have to continuously work at it. Because addiction is for the rest of your life because your body will always desire the previous high, the previous intoxication, the previous uplift from what you thought was an escape from your problems. So instead of Darla calling her sponsor, she is so conflicted and so depressed. And gladly, we see her pick up the bottle, but she puts it back down as if she says, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And that was the end of the episode. What did you think? So here we go. Recapping predictions made in the past. So far, I've been on the right track with my predictions. I predicted this with Darla. That everything going on with her with not just the book, but her desire to get the family, quote unquote, with Ralph Angel in blue has always been hovering over her head. The embarrassment of everybody knowing her past, the book, uh, Ralph Angel's family not really supporting her, and not even her own. And if they are at a distance. So I said, mm, after they, even when they got the counselor and they were talking to Blue and they were talking to the counselor, seeing how he was ingesting the information of knowing that Ralph Angel is not his biological father. Just because you had a talk about it, doesn't mean anything. It's a great step, but you're still dealing with the same issues. Darla is going to end up having to go back, back, back to, to really decide and really be honest of the source of why she started her addiction in the first place. She hasn't 100% done that yet. She has this facade that I have a job, I have a house, everything's okay, so why am I calling my sponsor? Why am I? You can't do it on your own. You can't do it on your own. I don't want to mention the preview to the next episode because I really want to stay in the viewership of what's going on in this episode. But the predictions have been right so far. I may not be right about the long lost cousin, but I don't have a good feeling about this. Why didn't anybody know about her? Why? Is the information about her mother being cremated, but she's buried? Why? Where are those secrets coming from? Is she telling the truth about why the family hasn't heard from her? It's really sketchy. I just really don't know. But so far, so good. 
I don't know what's going on with that. Still right about that. The next prediction, even though <laughs> Hollywood seems like he's going on the path and he's trying to be the best husband he can be, I'm still sticking with my guess that Vi will push him away, unfortunately. Think about what Hollywood has done in his marriage. Now, of course, if you're married, yes, you'd be the best husband you can be. You'd be the best wife you could be. But everybody has a point of frustration and, hey, meet me halfway in this marriage. Meet me halfway to make it better. Meet me halfway of communicating with me. Make me Meet me halfway in letting me know not just what I can do, but what are you going to do? Vi has yet to say, honestly, Hollywood, what do you want to do? She's mentioned it in another episode, but it was very, very quick. It was like, oh, you know, follow your dreams too. Rekindling your memory. Hollywood, from the money that he got granted in the settlement, right, when he used to work on the rigs, his dream was to pursue his own entrepreneurship. His dream was to have his own ideas, implementing them and helping the community in what he wanted to do. But instead, majority of his money has gone to planning the wedding, the honeymoon, taking Vi to all these places, making sure she has her restaurant, making sure she has this, making sure he, she has that. That is okay. That's being a good husband. But we have very vaguely heard Vi say, Hollywood, let's sit down and let's plan out your dreams. If we're low on money and we spent a lot of money on starting my dream first, because that's fair, we still do one at a time so we can get that 100% and then move on to the next thing. The fact that she hasn't genuinely mentioned it and it's been all, all about her worries me because now we're going into, now he's thinking, well, maybe I should start a group and maybe something's wrong with me and maybe... Ugh, Vi, I'm not feeling good about this relationship. I still think that Vi is pushing him away, and she doesn't even know it because she's so used to him going above and beyond for her. But when has Vi done that? Think about that. When has Vi done that for good old Hollywood? I also feel that Ralph Angel is going to feel guilty that he's having fun and that he's slowly getting in from like to maybe loving his new boo. That she's successful, do, do he, I think he'll go into do I deserve her type of thing, right? It, hopefully, Ralph Angel won't fall into that. So, I, I, I hope my predictions are incorrect. But the way that the season is going, there is too much foreshadowing. There's too much foreshadowing. As a viewer of Game of Thrones, as a viewer of The Wire, as a viewer of all these series and reading certain books there's too much foreshadowing not that many episodes left let me know what you think do you agree with me do you disagree with me do you think i'm crazy and i'm way off and it's just gonna be this wonderful disney ending let me know but remember it's a television show and they gotta pull us for another season we don't want it to end right so there has to be development and there has to be growth let me know what you think subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts and don't forget to follow me on Instagram, same profile name, officialbun underscore E. Bye.